What is up guys, before I'm going to dig in the core of what this video is actually all about, I'm going to give you some context, something that I want you to know. So you see, the difference between me and you is actually nothing. I am not special. That's very important before we go into this video. Because you might see my, my YouTube channel and you see, hey, this guy is like 75k subscribers, this is gonna be somebody special that knows everything. And the truth is, it's actually not. I am just a normal human being, just like you. There is nothing different. Maybe I have a little bit more experience than you, but besides that, I am not smarter than you. I'm not special. The only difference between me and you is my mindset. That's the only difference. So why do I have 75K subscribers on YouTube? Because I make YouTube videos, right? And why does somebody has only 10K subscribers on his YouTube channel? Well, only two reasons, right? Or he just started out, or he already quit, right? There is no difference, right? We, have, we are all human beings, and we all have like equal chances. It's maybe a little bit, that's a, a, a special topic. But by the end of the day, we are all just the same, right? Very important. Because three months ago, I actually woke up and I had this idea, well, idea, I had the urge to build something. I was basically chasing for a very long time. Uh, I was chasing the, the shiny little objects, uh, especially around AI, because that was hip. And I thought, man, I, that's just nothing for me. I don't really like to work in that. And I said, I'm going to just do my own thing, right? If people don't want to see it, that's their problem. I'm just going to do my thing. And because I have a lot of experience in trading instruments, I worked for exchanges for a very long time, market makers and, and some, some other trading uh, related analytic companies. And I said, man, I'm going to just build something and go completely from scratch, right? Of course, three months later right now, it's not really go anymore. The backend is go, but the, the client is basically in, 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 uh, is, is in written in the olden language. But the thing is that I just wanna build something from scratch and, and I just did it, right? And I, I worked on it for one day and I posted this tweet here. And basically, uh, you can see it, it's a very scuffed app if you look at it, right? It's nothing really special about it. Basically, everybody can make that. And I, and I posted this tweet and it had like uh, half a million views, which is basically insane. And the reason why it has so many views is because people were laughing at it, right? They were laughing. Uh, even the big co uh, competitors like Kraken and some other uh, competitors, they were laughing at my application because I said here, um, people sleeping on going 60 FPS, yada, yada, yada. And then some people say, of course, Jonathan Blow, for the people that don't know him, Jonathan Blow uh, commented as well on this tweet and he said, wow, you can render text at 60 FPS, right? So you can see, I started this out and a lot of people told me under the piss and I can actually just, I mean, why not, right? It makes sense, it, it looks like trash, right? But you need to understand that now we are three months further and we have a live working beta going on, right? You see, this is basically the product right now, which you can actually try for free, right? Check the link down in the description. And if you want to basically have access to the source codes and the insider package, which is basically you pay once you get the source code and you have lifetime updates and access to the official server, um, you can check the link down in the description as well. That supports the project, right? So this is what I built at three months. Um, it's right now working. The backend is in Golang and the client here is written in Odin, which is uh, available for Windows, Mac, Intel and Mac, Mac Intel version and Linux, right? Um, so the reason of this video basically after this small little intro is how did I do this? How, how can one go from nothing, the whole, the whole internet against him and deliver something without quitting? Because if you think that building this application um, in the distributed act, the backend and all that stuff, if you think that is difficult, if you think it's a skill, it's based on skill, I think you are wrong. And I really hope that this video can motivate, that's my goal, that this video can motivate you, can inspire you to basically just believe in yourself and overcome the moments where motivation is lacking. Because in my opinion, building something that's from zero to something that's actually usable,
by the internet and actually maybe makes, mo makes money, it takes way more than only programming skill. The most important thing is how do you overcome the moments where motivation is lack, where the motivation is lacking. Right. And I want to give you my tips because you need to understand that there were a lot of times, and I don't think I can count uh, them on all my fingers, which are 10. Yes, still 10. Uh, the moments where I was demotivated, the moments where I actually almost pulled the trigger or pressed the button to quit because I thought that it's too complex. Nobody is going to use it. What am I doing? Uh, uh, the, com the competition is already there. They already have something better than me. What am I doing here? I'm wasting my time. A lot of times. Because there were a lot of ups. But there were also a lot of downs. Because progression is unfortunately not linear. Right? And the only difference between succeeding and failing is that one more try extra. You know, that, 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 The one more day where you say, okay, come, let's, let's just continue. Right? So, because I don't know how you guys feel when you start a project and how your project life cycle uh, looks like. Right? Uh, and I would basically if, uh, share it in the comments. I'm really, really looking forward if you feel the same that I feel. Because I'm going to actually, uh, let me close this app real quick. I'm going to try to basically, um, let's call it right here, to give you guys an. Uh, overview on how my project's life cycle actually always always goes right it's a very important and i hope by the end of it you're going to have some tips so you can actually uh, finish your project right and and because you're going to learn a lot about that so basically it all starts here at this point this is a timeline right and we all have this idea suddenly you wake up or something or you, you're talking with a friend and oh you have this idea and you're going to make the next big thing right and you just start um, opening your application and you write the stuff in your favorite editor right and this time it's going to be different right you start you start building it and it's going to be different this time you're going to make tests you're going to name your variables perfectly you're going to do all idiomatic approaches that you have learned or that basically is uh, going around on the internet um, it's going to be painful point precise documentation comments everything and it feels amazing right it, the mo you, you cannot sleep you says full of dopamine adrenaline you want to wake up and you want to start building on your project and everything goes fine and you make a shit ton of progress the problem is that at a certain point of time things are going to go a little bit south because you're trying to implement more complex things a little bit of trial and error so your code is starting to look a little bit less structured because you want to quickly test and quickly see and, and, and you're building up and building up and doing it dirty. And before you know, it's starting to look a little bit like a mess, right? The progress you're making is also not that fast anymore because it makes sense, right? You always do the, the first things first, like the, the scaffold of your application is always the fastest, right? Authentication and all that stuff. You're also probably going to buy a domain name you're never going to use, you know? Um, but the thing is that at a certain point of time, things get complex. Things are uh, unknown territory. Let's say that this part here is basically unknown territory. Unknown. Because this thing is what we know. Right? Authentication, setting up a project, making some folders, you know, like a real, real fashionista. But then we are coming into the unknown and things are going to start to look dirty. Progress is going to be a little bit slower and doubt is creeping in, right? Doubt is creeping in. And most of the time it happens at the evenings where you're going to ask yourself, man, what am I doing here, right? What is going on? Uh, who, nobody's going to use it. Right? Why am I doing this? I'm wasting my time. And most of the time, this is what's going to happen. Your project is going down, down, and down. You're going to work less days on it. And you might going to look for the new high, right? Because that's it's a, little bit, a, bit, a little bit like a drug addict. You're going to search for your new high. And what is most of the time a new high? That is something, something else. A new project. A new language, right? Configuring Vim or something like that. And what's going to happen is that your project is going to die. Spiritus Santos. And this circle basically repeats itself again. Right. 
So why is this? So you need to understand that no matter what you do in life, and that's not only programming, and that's something that I really, really learned, is that if it's about friendships, relationships, jobs, editors, uh, color teams, programming languages, you name it, everything you do in life will get boring after a period of time. Everything. Everything you're going to do. You're going to basically get bored by everything. A new car. Wow, nice. After a year, pff, it's just a car and you want a new one. Right? So you can clearly see that the difference between failing, fail, and success has nothing to do with your skill level because even though you can be here like an, 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 an 100 tax engineer, you're going to have the same problem. You know what I mean? You're going to get bored and you're going to quit. So the skill level doesn't really matter, especially not in these times where AI and there's a lot of information out there on the internet. Right? So you can see that the difference between failing and success is just on accepting the boredness of what you're doing because it will get bored. Right? So how can we actually get less bored? How can we overcome this pivot point here, right? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of things that I do. The first thing that you need to do is you need to involve people in your project. Because if you are alone, there is nobody that is going to keep you accountable for what you're doing, right? If you are hungry and you're on a diet and you want to eat a, a chocolate bar, who's going to stop you? Right. But if you have people involved here, if you have people involved in your project, people, right? how do you write people? Damn, people. Right. If you have people involved, they're going to keep you accountable. And you're going to get motivated because people are using your, your, your project. People are talking about your project. So that it's, it's not going to really, it's, it's not going to 100% prevent failure but it's going to keep you accountable. And that's so important, right? Talk about your project. Do not be alone. People are not using it. I understand, but that's because you're not talk about it, right? You have no 75K subscribers on YouTube because you have no fucking YouTube channel. It makes sense, right? Voila. The second thing what you need to do is basically you need to start asking money. You need to start asking money. And that's a very controversial thing because people say, oh, open source and open source. And you need, yeah, okay, but open source. I mean, life is expensive, right? There are two things in our lives we need. We need money to feed our kids, to pay our rent, to stay alive. But we also, um, that's important, but also time is very important, right? We don't live forever. So money and time is super important in your life. It's very valuable. It keeps you going, right? And money, all, I, I'm not going to say you need to make yourself rich, but uh, money is important. We need, to be, we need to be honest here, right? We cannot deny that, right? So if you do open source, I, I, I made a lot of things open source, right? And I even have like 400 videos that are basically open source. But the thing is, guys, what I learned is that people are cruel, right? People always want to get They always want to, they always want to get, and they actually, not everybody gives. The majority just want to get. Only a, a handful of people, they give back. But, and that's very demotivating if you make a project open source and people just, oh, you need to implement this. When is that future? Oh, you suck. It sucks. It's bad. You, you, bad programs, bad paradigms, bad variable namings, bad, bad, bad. I mean, how are you going to basically motivate yourself? Keep working on your project if people are the only thing they do is complain. You know? Coming up with pull requests that are garbage. Coming up with pull requests full of their opinions. And you don't make any money. That's demotivating, guys. So ask money. Because by the end of the day, you are not scamming, right? You have built something. A mutable benefit. People want to use it. They're going to pay for it. It's simple as that. That's how business, are being, that's how business uh, is done, right? So don't be afraid to ask money from day one because that, this thing, 
right? This point plus this point will give you a lot of, a lot of, a lot of responsibility and accountability. People are paying for it. You cannot just quit. And you get money, which gives you this drive of motivation. Okay? That's very important. And that's what I do right now is involve people and ask money. Simple as it is. And it's people that are basically going to decide if they want to pay for that, yes or no. And that's their choice. Okay? And point three, that's super important, and that's the biggest mistake you're all going to make, and that's uh, one of the most important things. So if you like this video already, consider subscribing, uh, join the Discord channel, and give me a thumbs up because I promised grandma 100k subscribers by the end of the year. And if you want to see Market Monkey, check the link down in the description as well. If you want to support it, everything in the link down in the description, a little bit of a, a marketing. But point three is basically, you need to filter social media. Social media, social media. Because media. This is basically what I see in my community, the biggest mistake. So, for example, somebody is very proficient in JavaScript or very proficient in Python or something, or PHP. And they start a project and everything is fine, and then suddenly they see on Twitter that somebody is tweeting like, oh man, you need to use this new super language, Rust, because it's safe and it's fast and it's everything you need, or write Golang, or, 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 or no, you need to use Elixir, and, and, and all these, these things. And they, they're, you're gonna get in doubt, you're gonna, you're gonna be insecure, like, oh no, it, I, I'm building it in a wrong language, it's gonna be slow. And you're gonna be confused, you're gonna look at the new language, you're gonna get a new injection of dopamine, and you're off track. Simple as it is, right? Or uh, some paradigms like you, you cannot, you need to use this special tool, or Kubernetes, or they, they, they come, the whole social media is there to just mess with your mind you need to understand that and it's just a mindset and that's basically what i told you in the beginning of the video that that's the only difference between you and me is the mindset i can see true things sometimes people tell good things sometimes they tell 50 percent good things and it's up to you to change your mindset to believe in your own ideas and in your own narrative and take what you want from people and leave aside what you want from people you know what i mean like filter what you what you get what you need and leave behind what you don't need is very important. And if you are in doubt, if you do not know, always trust your inner instinct. Always tr trust your guts. Maybe you're wrong, and that's perfectly fine. Because if you're wrong, you're going to notice very soon. And you're going to learn. You know? That's what it is. So, this is not like an... This is... This is going to make me rich. This is going to finally get me a job or now I'm going to finish my project. No, it's like keep in mind, keep these things in mind and try to bite through the hard times, just like me, because I need to do that as well. And if I think about it, maybe I have more bad times than good times, but you just need to understand that even if you go to the gym or whatever you want to do in life, if you just keep doing what needs to be done to achieve your goal and you can just continue consistently do that success is always around the corner man trust me so i really hope this video is giving you a little bit of an inspiration um how you can go from something like i don't even find anymore something like the most crappy thing in the world to something that just works like a fucking charm you know what i mean without need to be an exceptional engineer because I ain't no exceptional engineer. Um, I just have an exceptional mindset. And learning to have this exceptional mindset is just a flip. You know what I mean? It's just take it as a man or a woman and, and embrace the boredness. And sometimes you need to take the pain for a couple of days or weeks because there's always ups coming as long as you can survive the downs. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you soon. Peace out.